In today's episode, we're taking a look at NanoDimension, a company with a very interesting technological profile. They work actually in the uh, so-called additive manufacturing electronics or printed electronics and are quite undervalued given their current stock price and what they have in terms of cash equivalents on their balance sheet. So I think this is a very interesting company we should take a look at more closely. I'll structure the video in the following way. First, I will explain to you why you should care about additive manufacturing of electronics. We discuss the application of deep learning and the benefits of deep learning embedded in their manufacturing suite. Then we take a look at their uh, acquisitions they have uh, recently done and how they uh, help the company actually achieve its main goals. And we take a look at the uh, business model and finally wrap up with the financials. Although I have a PhD in biomedical engineering and over 15 years of working experience in the healthcare industry, I do not intend to give you investment advice. Please consider your own risk profile before making any investments and research your investments wisely. Chances are you have at least heard about 3D printing and you may be aware that these so-called additive manufacturing processes that 3D printing ultimately enable provide unique ways to manufacture complex shapes that are not otherwise manufacturable. And the same is true for uh, nano dimension. The magic ultimately takes place in these, uh, well, 3D printing uh, machines. And the same is true for nano dimension. The 3D printing of electronics through additive manufacturing is happening in these, well, 3D printers. And these are called Dragonfly uh, 4. Inside of the Dragonfly printer, the 3D additive manufacturing is taking place. These printers are capable of uh, printing complex structures, printing actually different materials, as well as, of course, for electronics, conductive materials that then enable the processing and complex shapes of integrated electronic circuits that otherwise would not be uh, possible to manufacture. In case you are already somewhat familiar with electronics, you know that these complex circuit boards, so-called printed circuit boards or abbreviated PCBs, are the bread and butter of pretty much all electronics that we know today. These so-called printed circuit boards or abbreviated PCBs are essentially flat structures by default because they are built on a, a substrate called the wafer. Um, they can be multiple layers as you can see here, but in essence due to the flat shape ultimately the, there is not much innovation that can be uh, achieved in this regard. When we think about additive manufacturing steps, well, we can achieve the uh, sort of same approach. Although here the advantage is that two different materials can be printed. And this is the conductive material here in orange, as well as the dielectric. That is ultimately the substrate that does not necessarily conduct electricity. And all of the components can be embedded in this structure here as well. The advantage is that there is no lamination needed, there is no patterning uh, needed, and also optional electroplating, well, is uh, possible. And overall, a manufacturing step using additive manufacturing where all of these different um, materials can be integrated and printed as needed without any patterning, for instance, um, is a much faster way of producing these. In addition, you can see here again that the uh, classic PCB design is really flat um, and well can be stacked but what is really unique and that is really the unique feature that uh, the Dragonfly 3D printing process enables is that now for the first time we can have actually circuits that uh, can assume any shape and this enables really truly new design features, more complex and integrated circuits into intricate shapes that otherwise <clears throat> are not possible with the traditional printed circuit board designs. So 
anyone who has a Dragonfly for uh, AME or additive manufacturing system for electronics in their manufacturing facility or a research lab can actually produce very intricate uh, circuit boards very, very quickly, much faster actually than it takes to obtain first, well, the electronic design and then wait for a manufacturer to actually provide and ship the printed circuit board, which then has to be populated again with all of the electronic components that are a surface mount onto this uh, PCB. In this case with the Dragonfly, all of this can be done in an integrated single step and obviously much faster than with the traditional route. Obviously, it is no surprise that we find electronics really ubiquitous in any types of products. Likewise, when we take a look at the markets that can be served by this type of innovative uh, 3D printing of electronics uh, circuits, we can see, no surprise, research, of course. We find defense, aerospace, medical, as well as the automotive industries. All of those we can imagine are really uh, highly innovative industries that always look to shrink to integrate uh, integrated electronic circuits into smaller form factors. And this ultimately can also really uh, require or provide the necessity to be able to fit electronics into a very well defined three dimensional space therefore require electronics to assume a different form factor than the traditional flat printed circuit board designs. In order to drive and accelerate the yield of 3D printed electronics, uh, Nano Dimension have actually acquired a company quite well, recently, almost a year ago, actually in April uh, 2021, they acquired a Deep Cube, which is a world leader in advanced machine learning and deep learning technology. So you may wonder, why did they do this? The simple answer is that with uh, deep learning and the data ultimately that uh, is generated in the uh, 3D printing machines allows in real time to analyze and assess any uh, defects in the 3D printing with the ability to do on the fly real time corrections of uh, any print mistakes or any errors. And this ultimately enables a much higher yield, also faster production and with distributed learning at the same time. So as more of these printers get distributed and are actually all grouped together, um, will continuously drive improvement in the uh, printing capabilities. And with this nano dimension actually implement their vision of an industry 4.0 solution, which uh, enables ultimately distributed digital fabrication instead of just building the machines as a capital equipment. And you can think this, maybe you are more familiar with uh, Tesla and their uh, self-driving software. Ultimately, if you are, you know that the more Teslas are on the road, the more data they gather, the more they can feed into their uh, machine learning algorithms, the better the uh, self-driving software ultimately gets. And the same is actually true here. The more of these printers with nano dimensions, deep cube uh, data analytics and capabilities are deployed, the more data is generated and the better overall these machines get at fixing on the fly any uh, small printing imperfections, ultimately leading to uh, faster and better print results. We see that Nano Dimension actually have acquired strategically several companies in the past in order to uh, achieve their goal of basically enabling and going beyond the industry 4.0, that is <clears throat> the manufacturing of electronic circuits in, well, any shape or form that customers desire and need. And to enhance the capabilities of uh, placing accurately electronic components or embed them within the 3D printing process, Nano Dimensions have partnered with SM Tech, a Swiss manufacturer who is one of the world leaders in this type of uh, applications, as we can uh, see here actually on their own website. These are the very rapid, and this is very much slowed down, the uh, so-called pick and place machines. This is one of the technologies that they are very, very strong in. And electronic components come on these reels that you can see here. And the uh, pick and place machines, well, pick them at an incredibly fast pace. It is absolutely mesmerizing to see that in real time. And 
<clears throat> they are placed uh, onto the PCBs. In this case, of course, the traditional um, flat printed circuit boards. But uh, I'm sure that these uh, technologies are being adapted to be fully integrated then into the specifics that nano dimensions ultimately need. Then nano dimensions have uh, acquired Nanofabrica, an Israeli company who are very much specialized in 3D printing of micro machine parts, as you can see here. Very intricate, very accurate. And with the acquisition, these two companies merge their technologies, which will then ultimately enable also to uh, imagine printing any mechanical uh, pieces to high tolerances and actually being able to embed electronic capabilities and functions within those as well. And also the deep cube uh, learning activities also will become part of these uh, two merging well, technologies and merging companies in the end. So this is also very exciting because this clearly opens up new avenues of uh, integrating mechanics and electronics in really miniaturized ways. And then very recently, Nano Dimension uh, merged with uh, Global Inkjet Systems. This actually happened in January of uh, 2022. And the uh, well, Global Inkjet Systems is a leader and developer of high performance control electronics, software and inkjet or ink delivery systems. And they focus on high value demanding applications such as label packaging, textiles, <clears throat> product decoration, and of course, well printed uh, uh, electronics and 3D printing. So again, that seems to be a very uh, good fit. <clears throat> In the end, also, uh, this company has sort of the same uh, customer base that nano dimensions have. So again, there's also some uh, synergies uh, to be expected. Then let's wrap up this video by looking at the financials. We can see the ticker symbol is NNDM for nano dimensions. And we can see that the stock price with the overall broader market has really uh, gone down over the past few months. We can see now the current stock price is hovering just at around $3.50. And we can see here that this ultimately is a market capitalization of 868.43 million US dollars. So, and Nano Dimension have, uh, are now celebrating actually their 10 year anniversary. As you can see, they were founded in uh, 2012. And now declining stock price and so on, you've seen there were lots of acquisitions that are bound to uh, really benefit the company in terms of uh, customer base, in terms of technology offerings and so on. So while the stock price has continuously gone down, if we take a look at the la latest financial filings from the company, you can see though that in that same time frame as the stock price decreases, the revenue has increased by 107% in the uh, last <clears throat> nine months and uh, in the last three months actually increased by 206 percent. So and if we look at the balance sheets highlights we can see that per the latest filing cash and cash equivalents together with short-term bank deposits totaled 1 billion 385 million 391 thousand US dollars as of September 30th of 2021. And you can see also that this is significantly up from the 670 million, which was as of December 31 of uh, 2020. Now, if we take a look at just basically the cash and cash equivalents, equaling 1.38 billion, compare that to the current stock price, which we have looked at, which provides a market capitalization of 600 uh, of $868. Uh, dollars then this translates the current stock price of 350 if we were anything else aside just looking at a fair valuation based on the cash they have at hand well then this would roughly equate to a stock price that should be around five dollars and 58 cents and this constitutes an upside of over 50 percent over the current stock price now this, of course, is just based on the cash. That does not take into consideration the future benefits of all of these different acquisitions and integrating uh, different technologies. At the same time, I would like to take a final look at the overall business trend in terms of uh, 3D printed electronic components. 
you can clearly see here that the revenue forecast for 3D printed electronics is on an exponential rise curve and continues to go up quite significantly until the middle of this uh, decade. Furthermore, the business strategy that Nano Dimensions are actually following is a highly lucrative business model that we know from other industries already. As stated here, by creating our own install base of printers that require our own dedicated inks, we're establishing a razor and blades business model in which our customers buy the printer first and then continue to purchase the dedicated inks and maintenance over time. And I'm a big fan of these types of revenue models as well. Um, the printer probably um, is more expensive than it unlikely will be sold because over time, of course, the uh, consumable, that is the ink in the end, is really where the recurring revenue comes from. And that's a fantastic business model, um, just like the razor blades, exactly. Um, <clears throat> the inkjet printers that you know on your uh, desk, probably uh, same thing, the printer relatively cheap, and you have to buy the expensive cartridges to go along with it. And then for the customer, the uh, benefits are rapid manufacturing, uh, being able to integrate electronics into very complex non-flat shapes. Uh, so any three-dimensional shape that needs uh, electronics embedded in it is then possible to actually uh, produce. And this, again, as we have seen, serves pretty much any uh, major market that uh, requires innovation in uh, electronics. I hope you found this video useful for your investment research. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking the video and subscribing to my channel.